You're traveling through the unknown, a journey beyond the corners of reality, where the shadows whisper and the chill runs deep. Welcome to the dimension where your deepest fears are given form. This is The Midnight Mystery. Welcome to The Midnight Mystery. This episode is called The Cries of Lilith, a terrifying encounter with Satan's daughter. In each episode, we delve into the shadowed corners of our existence, bringing you tales of the eerie, the uncanny, and the downright terrifying. From the realms of the supernatural to the depths of the human psyche, no stone is left unturned, no dark secret left hidden. As the clock once again draws near midnight, prepare to embark on another adventure into the uncanny, the eerie, the horrifying, the midnight mystery. My name's Jack, and I've served with this squad long enough to know that we're more than just fellow soldiers. We're family. Each one of us comes with our own quirks, our own secrets, our own baggage. But out here in the desolate lands of Afghanistan, we've learned to see past our differences and stick together. Come on, Jack. You're daydreaming again, Corporal Thompson teased, snapping me out of my thoughts as our patrol made its way through the rocky terrain. I grinned back, feeling the weight of my rifle, the dust in my throat. Just taking in the scenery, Thompson. Someone's got to appreciate the finer things in life. Our squad leader, Sergeant Harris, turned his head to survey the landscape, his eyes narrowed, always vigilant. Keep your focus, boys. We're in unknown territory. That day, something felt off. I couldn't quite place it, but the air was thick with tension, almost as if the earth itself was holding its breath. What's that up ahead? Private Lewis asked, pointing to what seemed like shadows at the horizon. We squinted, realizing that the shadows were buildings, part of a small town that lay ahead, shrouded in silence and desolation, a town that wasn't marked on any of our maps. Sergeant Harris ordered us to approach with caution. Eyes peeled, everyone. This place doesn't feel right. As we moved closer, the town revealed itself to be more than just abandoned. It seemed untouched by time, untouched by the war. The buildings were old, yes, but not ruined. There was no graffiti, no rubble, no signs of looting, only a haunting stillness that hung in the air like a shroud. I don't like this, Sarge, Thompson whispered, his voice cracking with a hint of fear. I know, Harris replied, his face taut with concern. But we need to check it out. Just stay close. We entered the town, our footsteps echoing in the empty streets. Doors and windows stared blankly at us, like eyeless faces. The air was dense with an ancient and sinister energy that seemed to seep from the very ground. Lewis, Thompson, check those buildings on the left. Jack, you're with me. Let's take the right, Harris ordered, his voice barely above a whisper. We moved silently, each step deliberate, weapons at the ready. As Harris and I made our way through an alley, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. Jack, you feel that? Harris asked, his voice trembling with a dread I'd never heard before. I nodded, unable to find the words. It was more than a feeling. It was a presence, something old and malevolent, lurking just beyond our perception. Sarge, we need to get out of here, I finally said, my voice breaking the heavy silence. Harris looked at me, his eyes filled with a mixture of fear and resolve. We will, Jack. But first, we need to know what this place is. We need to know why it's here. We continued our exploration, every creaking door, every whispering wind amplifying the terror that gripped us. But we pressed on, driven by something more than duty, more than curiosity. The center of the town seemed to draw us in, like moths to a flame. And as we approached, an ominous and ancient-looking house rose before us. It stood apart from the rest, a dark sentinel watching over the town, its windows like hollow eyes, its door a gaping maw. Sarge, do you see that? Thompson's voice quivered as he pointed at the house. Sergeant Harris, usually a man of unbreakable resolve, looked disturbed. I do, he whispered, his eyes fixed on the house. Something's calling us there. We approached the house, each step heavy with dread, the air thick with anticipation. And then we heard it. A strange rhythmic call. A pulsating echo that seemed to come from the very bowels of the earth. It sounded like cries for help, but twisted, otherworldly. What is that, Sarge? Lewis asked, his face pale. I don't know, but we need to find out, Harris replied, his voice filled with a determination I'd never seen before. We entered the house, the floor creaking beneath our feet, the walls breathing with age. The cries grew louder, 
guiding us to a room at the back. There, in the middle of the floor, was a hole, dark and foreboding. That's where it's coming from, Harris said, peering into the abyss. But what is it, Sarge? I asked, feeling a chill run down my spine. What's down there? Harris looked at me, his eyes filled with a mysterious urge. We have to find out, Jack. We have to go down there. I looked at my fellow soldiers, seeing the fear in their eyes, feeling it in my own heart. But there was no denying the pull of that hole, the allure of the unknown. We'll go down together, Harris declared. But stay close, stay alert. We don't know what's waiting for us. We found ropes and began our descent one by one into the darkness. The cries grew louder, more insistent, more haunting. The walls of the hole were damp and cold, covered in strange symbols that seemed to writhe and shift. Jack, you all right? Thompson called from above. I'm fine, I replied, my voice betraying my fear. Just keep going. We reached the bottom, finding ourselves in a vast cavern lit by an eerie, inexplicable glow. The cries were deafening now, coming from all around us, from inside us. Sarge, what is this place? Lewis whispered, his voice trembling. I don't know, Lewis, Harris replied, his eyes wide with awe and terror. But we're here now. We have to explore. We moved forward, drawn by the cries, guided by an unseen hand. The air was heavy with the scent of decay and the weight of centuries. We should never have come here, Thompson muttered, but none of us argued. We all felt it. The wrongness of this place. The unnatural pull that had brought us here. But it was too late. We were trapped, ensnared by the call, bound to the darkness. Sarge, look, I whispered, pointing to a door at the far end of the cavern. He nodded, his face set with grim determination. That's where we need to go. We approached the door, our hearts pounding, our minds reeling. The passage led us into an ancient room, a place untouched by time, filled with massive pillars that seemed to reach into eternity. Each pillar was covered in indecipherable symbols, twisting and writhing, as if whispering secrets to those who dared to listen. The atmosphere was thick, oppressive, surreal. What is this place? Thompson gasped, his eyes wide with disbelief. It's like something out of a nightmare, Lewis whispered, his voice trembling. Sergeant Harris was silent, his face pale, his eyes fixed on the center of the room. Following his gaze, we saw her. Chained to the pillars was a beautiful woman, her eyes an intense shade of green, piercing our very souls. Her skin was pale, her hair a cascade of darkness, her body draped in tattered rags. She looked at us, and I felt a jolt of recognition, as if I'd known her all my life. Help me, she whispered, her voice filled with pain and longing. Please, help me. We were drawn to her, unable to resist her plea, her beauty, her sorrow. Who are you? Harris asked his voice filled with a strange mixture of fear and fascination. My name is Serafina, she replied, her voice like a melody, like a memory. I have been trapped here for centuries, bound by demonic forces, unable to escape. Her eyes filled with tears, and she told us her tale, a tragic story of love and betrayal, of innocence lost, of a curse that had condemned her to eternal torment. They chained me here, she sobbed, using dark magic, ancient spells. Only someone pure of heart can break the chains and set me free. Her words were a spell, weaving around us, drawing us in, making us believe, making us want to save her. What can we do? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Break the chains, she replied, her eyes fixed on mine. Free me, and I will be eternally grateful. We looked at each other, our minds reeling, our hearts torn. Could we trust her? Could we risk it? Sarge, this is madness, Thompson said, his voice filled with doubt. We don't know what we're dealing with here. I know, Harris replied, his eyes never leaving Serafina. But we can't leave her here. We have to help her. But what if it's a trap? Lewis argued, his face twisted with fear. What if she's telling the truth? I countered, feeling a connection to Serafina that I couldn't explain. We argued, our voices rising our fear and confusion growing. But in the end, we knew what we had to do. We'll free her, Harris declared, his voice filled with resolve. We'll take the risk. We'll break the chains. We approached Serafina, our hands trembling, our hearts pounding. The symbols on the pillars seemed to come alive, whispering warnings, whispering promises. Thank you, Serafina whispered, 
her eyes filled with hope. Thank you for believing in me. We began to work on the chains, the room filled with the sound of metal against metal, of ancient magic resisting our efforts. I don't like this, Jack, Thompson muttered, his eyes darting around the room. I don't like this at all. I know, I replied, my focus on the chains, my mind on Serafina's tragic tale. But we have to do this. We have to free her. We worked through the night, the room growing colder, the whispers growing louder, the symbols twisting and turning, as if trying to tell us something. Against the warnings of Thompson, who was growing more skeptical and anxious by the second, we continued to work on the chains, driven by a need to help, to save, to redeem ourselves. Jack, this isn't right, Thompson whispered to me, his eyes darting from Serafina to the pillars. There's something off about this place, about her. Can't you feel it? I feel it, I admitted, my hands shaking as I worked on the chains. But we have to help her, Thompson. We have to. Or what? He snapped, his fear turning to anger. What if we're making a mistake? What if we're unleashing something we can't control? His words hit me like a slap in the face, but I shook my head, pushing away the doubt, the fear. We have to take that risk. Thompson's eyes were filled with a desperate plea, but he said nothing, returning to his work, his hands trembling. The room seemed to grow darker, the whispers louder, the symbols more insistent. I could feel something building, something ancient and powerful. With one final effort, we broke the chains, and Serafina was free. But the room didn't fall silent. It came alive. Nightmarish visions filled the air, twisted faces, tortured souls, demonic creatures. The sounds were deafening, screams of agony, laughter of madness, cries of despair. What have we done? Lewis cried, falling to his knees, his face twisted with terror. We freed her, Harris said, his voice filled with awe and horror. We've unleashed her. Serafina stood, her body glowing, her eyes filled with an infernal light. You have done well, my saviors. You have freed me, for I am Lilith, the daughter of Satan. Her voice was no longer soft and sweet. It was dark and seductive, filled with power and malice. Lilith? Thompson whispered, his face pale. But you said... I lied, she replied, her smile cruel. But you believed, and that's all that matters. She began to move among us, her touch like fire, her words like poison. She knew our deepest fears, our hidden desires, and she exploited them, turning us against each other, driving us to madness. You want to be a hero, Jack? She whispered in my ear her breath hot against my skin. But you're afraid, aren't you? Afraid of failure. Afraid of death. I tried to resist, but her power was overwhelming, her words cutting through my defenses, digging into my soul. You want to be loved, Thompson? She taunted, her eyes fixed on his. But you're afraid of rejection, afraid of being alone. Thompson's face twisted with pain, and I saw him reach for his weapon, his eyes filled with a wild desperation. Lilith, stop! I cried, but it was too late. Thompson's shot rang out, and Lewis fell, his face filled with shock and betrayal. What have you done? Harris screamed, his eyes wide with horror. It's her! Thompson sobbed, his voice broken. She made me do it! She's in my head! Lilith laughed, her voice a symphony of evil. You have no idea what you've done, what you've unleashed. Her eyes met mine, and I knew. We had unleashed hell. As the room swirled with demonic visions and haunting echoes of tortured souls, Lilith continued her wicked dance among us, her laughter ringing in our ears. One by one, my comrades succumbed to terror, madness, and lustful temptations, falling victim to her manipulations. Thompson was the first to unravel completely. His face twisted in agony. He turned his weapon on himself, his last words a desperate cry. I can't get her out of my head! His shot rang out and he slumped to the ground, lifeless. Lilith, stop this! I screamed, trying to reach her to find some shred of humanity within her. But her eyes were cold, her smile wicked. Why, Jack? She purred, circling me. Don't you enjoy the show? Aren't you curious to see how it all ends? Her words were like venom, seeping into my mind, twisting my thoughts. I could feel her power, her seduction, but I fought against it, clinging to my sanity. Lewis was next. Driven mad by the visions, he stumbled towards a pillar, his hands clawing at his face. I can see them, he screamed. I can see them all. His body convulsed, and he collapsed, his eyes lifeless, his soul lost. 
Sergeant Harris tried to fight her, tried to resist her temptations, but she knew his weaknesses, his hidden desires. You want power, don't you, Sergeant? She whispered, her fingers tracing his face. You want to be in control. Don't listen to her, Sarge! I cried, but it was too late. His eyes were glazed, his body tense. With a wild cry, he attacked me, his movements fueled by madness and lust. We have to kill her, Jack! He screamed, his face contorted with rage. We have to destroy her! I fought him off, my heart breaking, my mind reeling. Sarge, it's me! It's Jack! Snap out of it! But he was lost, consumed by Lilith's manipulations. I had no choice. I had to stop him. My shot rang out, and he fell, his eyes filled with confusion and betrayal. Lilith, you monster! I screamed, my voice filled with grief and anger. What have you done to us? What have you done? She merely laughed, her eyes glowing with demonic delight. I have done nothing, Jack. You have done it all. You have unleashed me. You have destroyed yourselves. Alone and desperate, I looked around the room filled with the remnants of my squad, all victims of Lilith's wicked manipulations. My heart ached with grief and guilt, but I knew I had one task left, to destroy this evil, to end the nightmare. Lilith, I growled, my voice filled with determination. I will stop you. She circled me, her eyes gleaming with amusement. And how will you do that, Jack? You are alone, weak, frightened. I will blow up this place, I said, my hands trembling but my resolve firm. I will destroy you. She laughed, a chilling sound that sent shivers down my spine. You think explosives can kill me? You think you can defeat me? I have to try. I replied, my voice choked with emotion. I have to end this. I had found explosives earlier in the town, a remnant of the ongoing war. It was a long shot, but it was all I had. You're a fool, Jack, Lilith taunted, her voice dripping with contempt. But go ahead, try to stop me. I enjoy a challenge. I worked quickly, my hands guided by adrenaline and desperation, setting the explosives around the room, around the pillars. I could feel Lilith watching me, her presence like a cold, dark shadow. Time to say goodbye, Lilith, I said, my finger on the detonator, my heart pounding. Do you really think this will end anything, Jack? She asked, her voice soft, almost sympathetic. Do you really think you can escape me? I have to try, I whispered, tears in my eyes, grief and fear weighing heavy on my soul. I pressed the detonator, and the world erupted in flames. I ran, my legs fueled by terror and determination the ground shaking beneath me, the sound of the explosion echoing in my ears. I made it out, just in time. The town engulfed in flames, the ancient room destroyed, the nightmare over. I collapsed, my body racked with sobs, my mind reeling. I had done it. I had stopped her. I had won, or so I thought. As the flames danced and the smoke billowed, I heard a laugh, a soft, wicked laugh that chilled my blood. You cannot kill me, Jack. Lilith's voice whispered in my ear, a ghostly presence that would never leave me. You cannot escape me. I will be with you, always. I looked around, but she was gone, her presence a lingering nightmare, a haunting reminder of what I had unleashed, of what I had failed to stop. The weeks that followed were a descent into a new kind of hell. The world began to experience strange phenomena, skies turning blood red, animals behaving erratically, natural disasters occurring with alarming frequency. Darkness spread, both literal and metaphorical, as fear and confusion gripped humanity. I knew what was happening, and I knew I was responsible. I'd unleashed an unimaginable evil, and now the world was paying the price. I tried to tell people, tried to explain what had happened, what I had done, but no one believed me. They called me mad, broken, a traumatized soldier who had seen too much. Jack, You've been through a lot, a psychologist told me, her eyes filled with pity and concern. It's natural to feel guilty, to feel responsible. But you have to understand, these things happening around the world, they're not your fault. But they are, I cried, my voice filled with desperation. I unleashed her, I set her free, and now she's destroying everything. She reached out, her hand gentle on my arm. Jack, it's a delusion, a way for your mind to cope with what you've been through. We'll help you. We'll make it better. But I knew she was wrong. I knew there was no making it better, no escaping what I had done. I was haunted, both by Lilith's wicked laughter and by the faces of my fallen comrades. I saw them in my dreams. 
heard their voices in my ears, felt their pain and betrayal. You shouldn't have trusted her, Jack, Thompson would whisper, his eyes filled with accusation. You should have stopped her, Lewis would sob, his face twisted with grief. You failed us, Harris would growl, his voice filled with anger. I knew they were right. I had failed them, failed the world. I became a recluse, my mind unraveling, my soul broken. The darkness inside me grew, fed by guilt and despair. Sometimes late at night I would hear Lilith's voice, soft and seductive, taunting and tempting. You cannot escape me, Jack, she would whisper, her words a chilling caress. You are mine now, forever. I knew she was right. I was hers, bound by my actions, by my guilt. The world continued to spiral into chaos, darkness spreading like a cancer, consuming everything in its path. And I was left alone, haunted and broken, knowing that I had unleashed an evil I could never undo, a nightmare that would never end. All I could do was watch, helpless and hopeless, as the world fell apart, as everything I had fought for crumbled to ashes. I hope you enjoyed our episode. I'd like to extend a heartfelt thanks to you, our brave listeners. Your presence in this shared journey into the unknown is what fuels our stories. Your fascination is our motivation. Did this episode send chills down your spine? Then leave your comments, your thoughts and theories, your own midnight mysteries. Your feedback is the beacon that guides us through the uncharted territories of our stories. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe to our channel. By joining the Midnight Mystery family, you won't miss out on a single chilling tale. As a subscriber, you'll be the first to know when a new episode lurks around the corner, ready to pull you back into the shadowy depths of the unknown. This is the Midnight Mystery signing off, leaving you with a simple reminder. When the clock strikes 12, fear the silence, for that's when our tales come to life. Good night, Midnight listeners. And remember, not all who wander into the dark are lost. <laughs>